I am Yo, I'm a, a musician. There's a reason why everybody does not you gotta stop right here. With bipolar this is a disorder. This song is dope. Bro needs a new I'm gonna be honest, man. Music might not be your thing. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna be honest. 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 My ideas, feelings, and experiences, and is therapeutic. Hello, my name is Travis Bailitz, and this is my brother Kyle Bailitz Hello. with BeyondMyPolarBlog.com. And today I want to talk about what it's like to be a musician who receives a lot of backlash when it comes to being one. Now, let's get to the beginning of the story. Kyle and I have been musicians for 30 plus years. We started way back when we were in third grade, actually. And the whole story started where we had neighbors, actually a neighbor who kind of knew how to play piano. We had a piano at home, but he started playing heart and soul and we kind of got into it. And I learned a little bit of it by ear and I got inspired to take lessons along with my brother. So that kind of got the ball rolling on our stages of musicianship when it came to playing piano. So the irony is that we stuck with piano for 12 are from third grade to 12th grade so eight years that is roughly eight years as Kyle said so we were roughly from seven to eight years old all the way up to 17 to 18 years old when we first started in seven when we're seven and eight we were extremely shy all the way up to college. 12th grade not even college we, well even up to college but I'm talking about when we came to performing we had a lot of performance anxiety. I hated it. And we really struggled with it. And since this is a mental health channel, uh, our channel is about dealing with mental health issues and anxiety is a big factor when it comes to mental health challenges. Now, I kind of want to talk about what it's like to be a musician and what it's like to deal with anxiety. Now. When I was in third grade, when I first started and Kyle first started, we were really into it. And unlike her sister, who also went up to 12th grade to play piano, we were actually very invested in playing piano. Kind of. Now, that's kind of with a grain of salt because even though we were more, we practiced more than our sister, we weren't the most talented. We just practiced a lot more than most of the people there who did play and perform. Now, because of that, you could say that we we're pretty gifted, but not only that, we did play more complicated songs because in 11th and 12th grade, we actually started to play Final Fantasy music. And, Do you remember the songs you played? And that actually started with Eternal Harvest from Final Fantasy IX piano collections and those who fight from Final Fantasy VII Piano Collections and Kyle. That is Fisherman's Horizon though. Oh, uh, I don't think I played Fisherman's Horizon oh. at all. I think mine was Sleepless City, Torino, Ami, and uh, the ending theme for Final Fantasy VIII and Melodies of Life. And I think I also tried Bomb Wall Flamenco, which I played really terribly, I remember. You played <laughs> pretty yeah, I terribly. Pr I, I played pretty terribly, too. But, but anyway, let's get to the story. So, Final Fantasy really is what inspired So us that kind of inspired our in total musicianship. So lo the and game. behold, we are not new to the music scene. We've been with it for 30 plus years. So we've been pianists for a very, very long time. Not only that, from fifth grade onward to 12th grade, we also were in band as percussionists. It also took a year for us to play piano, to be eligible to be a percussionist in band. Now, I actually was eligible for honor band a year after. You could say I was the best of the worst. Yes, yeah, somehow. Of, <laughs> I was the best of the worst honor band students because 
I ended up getting in there in 10th grade when most don't show up until 11th or 12th grade. And to be honest with you, I was very depressed and anxious and I didn't have a lot of confidence at all when it came to performing in public. You and were lonely at the concert. I, I had no friends in, in there at all. And I felt very, very lonely because I had a hard time making friends and people would tease me. And I felt very, very conscious when it came to playing music. So I hated band. I could consider myself a musician from third grade to 12th grade, but I actually hated being a musician. I, I, I could say I enjoy playing music on my own terms, but I hated playing and performing in public. I don't know if Kyle has the same. I hate it. I was anxious. <laughs> it was, I was just a terrible musician and it really affected my mental health and my, my happiness. Let alone, I hated the school system. So the question is, do you feel that, was it worth it to go through all that pain and torment to play and perform? I guess in the end, if you take it with a grain of salt, sometimes people, they say the saying that some things, even if they're bad things that are meant to happen, uh, not to you, but for you. So in a way it did kind of prep us up. I'm not sure why anxiety was actually beneficial to us, but uh, maybe it inspired us to do better in school. I mean, we did stick with 3.8 GPA for throughout the most of our high school and college life, which is all right. But I think all the skills that Travis done being a pianist and a percussionist, that's what really got him into it. And he became more experienced, but I think Final Fantasy Nabu Amatsu was really the one that inspired us to keep at it. Cause then you eventually, maybe you need to continue more of your history about what happened during college. Like yeah. we made our piano channels and- Yeah, so anyways, before we get to that, I do want to say that my greatest memory when it came to being in high school, when it came to music, even though I hated playing performing was actually traveling to Czech Republic and Germany. I don't know what Kyle's experience was, but I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that experience. We took a lot of photos, but we ended up losing the whole SD card of it. Yeah. I don't know what, what happened to it, but that was a really good memory that for anyone that has been in band and has the opportunity to go with other band students. Uh, beautiful landscapes, beautiful churches. I remember beautiful woman too. So it's just really, really good opportunity and for those guys that do struggle in the beginning with mental health issues in, in middle school and, and high school, please do not be afraid to open up to like counselors. We were really afraid to. Even back in the day, we were open to, we were very unopen to these groups. We we're actually kind of forced to join this uh, minority group back then, but we were so uncomfortable with it because we didn't like people anyway. Do you remember but, when Linda, Linda was our piano teacher, we gave her a bunch of CDs like in college. Uh, do you remember that she wanted us <laughs> to think about her life and she thought that we should be pianists and we didn't think it'd go anywhere? Yeah, so Kyle mentioned that like, why haven't we chose music as a career? Well, you know, Anxiety. when I was in Money. 12th grade, my band teacher, Casperson, Mr. Casperson, I believe his name was, actually encouraged me to do music. But at the same time, I was just too anxious and I felt like I would, didn't know what my future was. And I still probably don't. But at the same time, you have to realize that because I was so anxious and depressed and Psychotic. felt very, very <laughs> uncomfortable with myself and didn't think I was terribly attractive. It felt very, very ugly. Monkey and, mouth. People always made fun of me because of my monkey mouth and called me Kermit and it just made me... That's really why it affected my my uh, kind of want to want to have children because our high school years was a pretty miserable existence for sure. <laughs> At least eighth grade through high school. I wouldn't want to wake up early, being tired, studying for stupid that was, shit, that being was another, confined. That was another big problem with, with music is it was like... Music for me, it was, prison. it was actually the first class and I was really tired and I hated it. Oh, There's this one kid, I forgot Peter. his name. 
<laughs> he would sleep on the floor <laughs> during music and he'd always get in trouble. And he would but, play the, the, the drum kit too, yeah, out but, of season. But hey, I, I have a feeling he's probably successful now, but at the same time. A lot time, of them are. Wasn't there another guy that worked for la the, irrigation there too? There probably is. He's man. a good it's, drummer. I mean, these guys were probably pretty experienced. They have a passion for life and yeah. we have a dispassion I mean, for they're, the violin, villainous, The violinist there is actually, he was also a percussionist, he's actually a doctor army army so it's kind of interesting to see that you know a lot of these guys that were became successful became pretty successful but anyways that's kind of all and having kids so that's kind of just and they the, manage and uh probably uh, adapted to life i feel like in adulthood so anyways uh let's get to the story on After why we college. chose to not do music is like i said we were just very conscious of what we looked like, our appearance, and that affected our ability to play and perform, and that's the whole reason why we chose to not do music. Anyway, so this gets to our college years, and Kyle and I started this channel called Monho Park and Chianho You Park. did for some reason. I don't know why you did it. Your Actually, very first one was a in the beginning, <laughs> there was this first song I did from Final Fantasy Piano Collections, Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collections called Eyes on Me, Oh yeah, you it did, did play that so one. well that inspired Kyle to, to do, do Sleepless his, City Torino. to do his own rendition from Final Fantasy IX Piano Collections, which was Sleepless City Torino. Sleepless Trino. City from Final Fantasy IX from Final Fantasy IX Sleepless City in Trino. And right now, I want to just go on the Monho Park account because yeah, you have a lot I just want to share with you guys the statistics on some of these songs because Kyle and I actually did gain quite a bit of traction. viewers and traction. People and even wanted our autographs back then too. Currently, right now, I have 2,256 <laughs> subscribers on the Monho Park Yeah, channel. but you used to have 3,000. And... You? Kyle has 1,990. I lost subscribers. He lost subscribers. I lost subscribers. But anyways. It pretty much stopped after college. For instance, I have uh, Final Fantasy VIII, Those Who Fight, with 533,000 views. And what about the Those Who Fight? One? Final Fantasy IX Collections, You're Not Alone, 208,000. What about the... Final Fantasy VII Piano Collection, Those Who Fight, 1,113, another what rendition. What about Moonlight Sonata? Final Fantasy IX Piano Collections, Final Battle, 94,000. Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collections, Eyes on Me, 91,000. Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collection, Fisherman's Horizon, 70,000. Final <laughs> Fantasy IX Piano Collection, the Eternal Harvest, 50,000. Final Fantasy X, Beset Island, 45. Final Fantasy IX Piano Collection, Eternal Harvest, 40,000. Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collection, 38,000. Final Fantasy IX OST, Lost in Me, 32,000. And the list goes on and so on. So you and got on. over 30,000. So there's a ton of what about the, viewers the, on that account. The Moonlight and Sonata, though. I'll get to that later, but Kyle also released a whole bunch of music, and I'll show you some, Not of, as it, popular, some, some of his statistics. So. He has a Final Fantasy IX Piano Collections Melody of Life with 347,000. Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collections Ending Theme with 170,000. Uh, Final Fantasy IX Piano Collection Bama Alpha Menko with 150,000. Final Fantasy X Piano Collection Two Zen Arcade 140,000. Final Fantasy IX Piano Collection Melody of Life 3 89,000. Final Fantasy VIII Piano Collections Ami 81,000 Final Fantasy 9 Piano Collections Sleepy City Trino Sunny 1000 Final Fantasy 9 Piano Collections Sleepless Trino 2 48,000 So we've Man. done a lot of renditions of previous <coughs> songs but they gained a lot of traction back, back when, then when YouTube, YouTube just first started before so monetization This literally was 17 years ago This is when YouTube actually first got its start We were we we're got boys. our start literally when YouTube got its we start. We were very small YouTube stars. So we considered ourselves pretty <coughs> successful back then. So half a million views. So uh, that's pretty remarkable. And Kyle did mention other music. My most famous or my most viewed video In is a rendition of Moonlight Sonata Movement 2 with 2.4 million views. 
and I have another one with Kiss because I'm a girl with 193,000 views. So you can imagine this, we were pretty well accomplished musicians. So for those that tell us to give up, give up on music or tell us that we're not credible musicians, please look back on youtube.com slash monopark or youtube.com slash channel park. Channel park once, and monopark. Once again, M-E-N-H-O-P-R-K and C-H-E-O-N-H-O-P-R-K. Take a look at those channels and you'll see that we do have quite even, credibility. Even when it some comes of those music. popular ones, we were actually speaking to some of the musicians. There's a Korean adoptee girl, Kyle Landry, Arcton, I can't remember. So we did come else. across this very, other bodybuilder too. We kind of developed a community with the other pianists out there. Yeah, and they ended up getting pretty famous. So this other guy called Bruneville, that's when I started my own compositions. And that leads to like 2000, this was like 2007. This led to 2009 where I totally ditched co covers. I totally ditched composing. I, I mean, I totally ditched playing covers and where I started composing my own music in 2009. I actually started in 2004, my own song called Cat and Mouse, but I never officially started composing music in 2009, but that's when all hell broke loose because my I death. lost all my mental health pretty much. Do you think we self-destructed? <laughs> I self-destructed, I, I became bipolar. I had bipolar and, and everyone was saying what happened <laughs> and literally I fell off the face of the earth really you wanted to not but, even be on earth <laughs> but pretty much you know that led to the, my beginning stages of where I'm at today where people are saying quit music don't quit your day job because that started my whole take on where I wanted to be a video game composer a film composer and uh, literally like right now I can give you the statistics of where I am at. Dual tracks or what so, are you talking about here? Real group station? So right, right now, uh, when it comes to composing music, let's see, I know I have it, I, I have it here because my heart is actually composing music, not doing covers. Singing? It's been that since 2009. So a good 15 years, I consider myself a composer not only just a music player, but a composer. And I don't know where Kyle's at when it comes to music, but I'm sure he still dabbles in music. He can kind of I mean, you just did that. a song uh, based off me, Baby Girl and that other one, the No Lives Matter one. Yeah, so Kyle, so I dab and I, on it, but. Kyle and I have three different labels, actually four different labels. One under Real Group Station, which is our songs and raps. Another one, dual tracks, which is instrumentals. Three, which is dual beats, which is beats. And four, dual pianos, which is actually covers of covers. Our, our previous covers that we've done on Mono Park and Chiano Park. So let me get to you some of the statistics when it comes to my music. So for the Real Group <laughs> Station under the label, the Real Group Station label, uh, my, my artist name is Travis D. I have released eight song rap albums for a total of 101 tracks and for duo tracks nine instrumental albums for a total of 120 tracks and for duo beats five beat albums for a total of 70 tracks so that is literally uh so 101 120 70 let me double check 101 plus 120 plus 70 291 tracks so that is a lot of music don't and, forget me and kyle released <laughs> one special song called sabotage and which, with one view <laughs> which one view on spotify see if you do comparison i'm even worse musician so people are thinking like so you compose this much music have you actually found success well I say I have one song called Will You Be In My Lane has 302,393 streams. River Flows In You has 301,024 301, streams. Attack on Titans has 12,618 streams. So the problem with these is that these are not my beats that I rap to, and they are hooks that are not my melody. So unfortunately, I guess I can't Don't take total right. credit where I own the rights to the beats, but the fact that 
they gain over 300,000 for two songs. I guess I can take some credit to say that I am somewhat proud of it. And to be honest with you, you know, so for seven or seven for so so basically you're asking how many streams have i actually reached since maybe three four years since i've been on tunecore i've managed to get seven hundred and eleven thousand five hundred sixty one plays and i guess i am pretty happy about that but i've only managed to make 153 dollars and 40 cents pretty good that, that you music. bought but you bought so the problem is is that spotify does pay the most but literally if you are not familiar with how streams are calculated for spotify it varies from country to country and if you're are a subscriber or not if you have a subscription status or not but they literally only pay like point zero zero three cents so literally for three streams it's one cent for earned income so you literally need three streams to earn one cent basically and i'm trying to figure out how much a million streams covers let me double check for basically one million streams can you guess how much money you'd get? You'd only get $2,380 for a million streams. So that's like like pocket change. And people have been complaining that literally, if, if you wanted to make a living as uh, someone that's a musician, just in streams alone, you're literally making no. what a parking lot attendant makes. And that's like literally nothing. But you guys, I am at heart a musician and I don't know what Kyle can we go to an, Can we go to an advance or I mean, a advice part? So you didn't read any of those comments that that they were writing against you. Were you supposed to or no? Well, the, that's the thing. It's in the beginning where it's oh. showing, it's splashing all of these negative comments. Oh, okay. So, it's, so it's what's your advice? I asked Travis, since a musician is being a musician is whole identity and the more popular you are, the more haters you're going to get does it make you want to kill yourself and you think it's worth it to want to kill yourself you know, before, what, people's, what be people say about before you. i was thinking about making this video i was very very depressed seeing all these because i was trying to compile all these negative uh comments and you know it was really kind of putting an emotional baggage on my Why am I doing this my my ego because like people don't realize this that kyle and i and even Nancy, who's been kind of part of the music videos, we put a lot of work in our. She's holding the endeavors. gimbal right now, and, and it's very heavy. People don't realize the amount of work that we actually put into these videos alone. I mean, you might disagree with the amount of music that I, I produce, put or or the or how crappy my voice is, or the instrumental, or things like that. We put a lot of work. We in put the a video lot editing. of work in the music video, and people video have a editing. tendency to overlook that. People have a tendency to overlook the fact that it, why do you make music in the first place? People have a tendency to say you suck or don't quit your day job or tell you to uh, just quit, uh, quit forever or you have no talent or that you're just a piece of crap, literally. And they spit on you. That shouldn't exist. And isn't it that, is that important? I don't think it is. And the thing is, is that yeah, it hurts sometimes because I am human when it comes to these comments. And sometimes it does discourage me from Even wanting to do making it. music. And I question myself why I keep doing it. But but do you do it for other down, people, but for yourself? But deep down, I, am, I consider myself a musician. I consider myself a composer. I consider myself an artist. And I don't know about Kyle because he considers himself a creative, especially creative a individual, producer. whether that's art, music, video productions for sure, computer technician. And this goes for a lot of people. People struggle with bullying online and generally people who bully other people, I you just have so. to, my advice is just, you got to kind of develop thick skin and you have to realize that you have yourself. You matter. Work. You matter. 
you had to kind of understand that you had to let your voice be heard and you had to realize that you matter. You can't always give listen up. to what other people say. Don't give up. And if you enjoy doing something. Who gives a shit? Don't let other people tell you, you can't. that you can't do whatever you really want to do in life. And that's kind of my message to you guys. Do you today, feel strong? Is that in spite of what other people tell you to do, not do something that you guys should do what you are really inspired to do deep down. If you have a dream that you really want to catch and you really want to manage to get somewhere with it, you just have to believe you have to keep doing what you want to do. You have to keep grinding and gives your life meaning. If it gives yourself meaning and if I can give yourself hope when it comes to doing whatever passion is following your dreams, that, just go for it, climb the tree like those kids. So you just have to keep moving forward, guys. And yeah, so this Do video, you feel angry or about it? Hurt or angry? Do you feel like they should be big, big F you or not really My anymore? biggest issue is that, you know, I always wanted to make money from streams alone, but seeing the fact that a million bucks only makes 2,300 views or $2,300, like I didn't literally have to make like 10,000, 10, let me see. So let's see how much 10 million, 10 million uh, streams get. Let me see. 10 million streams will, 10 million streams is 23,800 views. So that's not bad, but still, you're literally a poor, poor person, like a janitor or, or, or maybe you someone are that, that literally is, is at a work and a restaurant as a waitress. Okay, so literally guys, People tell me, don't quit your day job. I haven't, I'm still a janitor. So you can't tell me I'm doing it likewise. So so I wanted to take also another word of advice. Most of the world, even though America is kind of have polarized in the poli especially in the political scheme, I feel like America is still a pretty decent place for opportunity. There are many countries and people that actually have to work for less than a, a dollar a day. And even though if you're poor here, you're actually probably rich compared to other parts of the world, let alone we have the freedom to not have to work seven days a week. And we don't have to garden because like all this, look at all the the industry, the the mechanisms like stores where you could buy food. You don't have to garden your own food. You can drive, you could explore. You, it, even though things seem really bad, I feel like you still got it good even if you're not getting your musicianship. What do you think? Yeah, so I think the thing is, is that be grateful. Just be grateful of the opportunities that you have if you are in a first world country. And, you know, people have a tendency to belittle you if they don't understand who you are. And you just got to take these people with a grain of salt that they don't know who you are. And they don't know your intentions. They don't know why you do things. They don't know why you're a musician. They don't know why you're a creative. They don't know what motivates you. They don't know why you do a certain thing. And in the end, if they don't like it, they can always just listen to someone else who gives a crap. You know, the thing is, is that I don't expect you guys to like my music. I don't expect you guys to force yourself to listen to it. I don't expect you guys to uh, understand anything that when it comes to my content, especially on YouTube itself. Heck, I don't even think that this video will go viral at all because it's just kind of like my previous video that I thought would gain traction. I thought by August I'd get monetized with 404,000 watch hours, but I'm not even certain right now because it's on the fence. There's only two videos that's life is meaningless and, and my suicide attempt, but those are the only two videos that are gaining traction. These other videos are kind of just idling and I'm not sure if they'll get anywhere, but I'm hoping that this video will. But you never know, cause some things track like later, we call that residual views too. So just because time is relative, just because something's not happening now, doesn't mean it won't happen later. That's my advice too. So is so, there anything else you want to add to it that it comes to last words that like you yourself is not a musician or do you consider yourself a musician? I don't even consider myself that successful, but at the same time, why does it matter? It's just better to believe in health. Like, like, Tra like, like Travis is saying, if you really want to be successful, that also comes with sacrifice. And that means time and also your health. Really, if you want to, you have to just work hard. 
you have to keep working hard, grind, grind, grind. But then again, as a mental health channel, you also want to have a lifestyle balance, including your health, work, and passion. So in the end, there's a lot of musicians out there that are pretty miserable. I mean, who's that, that bipolar girl? Well, Demi bye. Lovato. They have to work a lot of hours driving everywhere, doing tours, and that just sounds miserable. So, I mean, literally. Success isn't always without its sacrifices. And if those sacrifices are too much, then I'm not sure. It's probably not worth it in the end. Anyways, guys, if you want to support me, please go to hyped it slash Travis D and hop.com slash Travis Bales or hop.com slash Kyle Bales for more content for bio links. And is there anything else you want to add? No, we should just take a picture after, I don't know what scene or what do you want to, with our shirt off, shirt on, or? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. But anyways, is that it? Yeah, that's it okay. guys, hang in there. All right, this is Travis and Kyle Bailitz with beyondmypolarblog.com. I hope you gain some insight when it comes to this content, when it comes to being a musician, an artist, a creative, and my insights on it when it comes to <coughs> mental health as well. So please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for future videos. Take care. Have a good one. Anyways, this is just a shameless plug, but I produce music. I have over 270 tracks, including songs, instrumentals, and beats. These are two physical albums. One is a piano album right here, and the other one is a orchestral album. The piano album has 17 tracks. The orchestral album has 19 tracks. They're on sale for five bucks a piece or eight dollars for both of them. These are really original. I know not a lot of people have CDs, but it'd be great for any donations if you want to buy them. What makes it personal is that the original art is by Kyle and me, and one is a graphic art, and the other one is acrylic artwork that Kyle and I done together. Anyways, that ties something else, which I also do art, so I do hyper-realistic artwork. As you can see here, just some examples and I do airbrush portraits and as stated before I do abstract acrylic work that I often do sometimes with my book but anyways please go to lift.bio slash monopark once again it's l-i-f-t dot bio slash monopark m-a-n-h-o-p-r-k so please like comment subscribe and hit the bell button Take care, have a good one, bye. Hello, this is Travis and Kyle. We are both artists and we focus on hyper-realistic drawings, acrylic work, airbrush work. So I also wanted to mention that we actually have our own channel as well. Our channel is Korean Adoptee Stories and we interview a lot of adoptees. Uh, we found that with adoption, there's quite a few adoptees that struggled, unfortunately, and did not have the best kind of life and a lot of them had mental health issues. We felt like it was important because us, we can kind of struggle with that.